Welcome to Mentor Aviation News, news taken straight from mentorpilot.com. On Saturday, the 13th of February 2021, a very serious incident happened to a Boeing 757-200 freighter that was flying out of Leipzig in Germany. This 757 freighter was flown by DHL and it took off from Leipzig runway 26 left or at 0432 UTC time. The aircraft climbed out but about 5,300 feet climbing. When they were about 10 nautical miles west of the airport, they got an indication that the left main cargo door had flung completely open. They would have noticed that by both a warning light just in front of the captain and also four warning lights that would have appeared on a control panel inside of the cockpit. On top of that, also, obviously, the aircraft would be unable to pressurize with that door open. The crew seemed to have done their emergency checklist and done an extremely quick return. Right? They only spent about 15 minutes in the air and that's including the first couple of minutes when they were climbing out where nothing was wrong. And eventually they landed on runway 08 right in Leipzig. That's the opposite runway from where they took off from. So why were the crew in such a hurry to get back down on the ground? Well, in order for you to understand that, you need to understand a little bit more about the 757-200 freighter conversion. This aircraft is about 29 years old and it started its life as a normal 757 passenger aircraft. But in 2011, it was purchased by DHL and it was converted into a freighter. Now, when you convert a passenger aircraft into a freighter, there's a couple of things you need to do. But probably the main job that needs to be done is you need to open up a huge door in the forward left side of the aircraft so that you can put containers into the aircraft, right? Because containers is the main way to kind of haul freight around. And when you do so, you need to realize that if you open up a big hole on one side of the aircraft, it's going to affect the structural integrity of the aircraft. That door is a really integral part of the entire aircraft structure. So you need to build it in a way where you can open it, you can you know, get freight in and out, and then as you close it and the mechanical locks kind of locks into place, well then the aircraft is structurally sound. And this is the case on this uh, 757 freighter. This conversion was made by an external company, so it wasn't Boeing who did this conversion, it was a company called Precision, if I'm not mistaken. And part of that, when you have a huge door, is that you need to be able to open and close it. So, in order to do so, in this case, you use hydraulics. But they didn't want to tap into the main hydraulic systems of the aircraft. Instead, they've actually built an external hydraulic system, which is completely independent of the aircraft in itself. So, when you saw pictures of this aircraft after landing, you saw that there was kind of some kind of brown liquid that was splashed from the door and up over the left-hand wing. So if there was some kind of hydraulic rupture, well then the fluid might be spraying out and that's potentially what you're seeing in these pictures, but it would not have had any effect on the main hydraulic systems to fly the aircraft. Right. But remember how I said that the door is a structural component? It's so much so that there are some quite strict restrictions on doing stuff with this aircraft when the door is open. For example, you're not allowed to neither push or tow this aircraft with the door open. If you do so, the aircraft is going to be grounded and the engineering team is going to have to open it up and check for structural problems. That's how sensitive it is. On top of that, when you are loading and unloading the aircraft, you have to keep a close track of your wind speed. Because if the wind goes up above about 25 knots, you have to be careful with how the door is operated and you're not allowed to operate the door with wind speeds over 45 knots and if it is that high it's not allowed to be fully open it has to be in what they call a canopy position which is just partially down and closed because essentially as the door is fully open it becomes like a sail it takes up a lot of wind so if you now know that and you know how important this door is the structure and integrity of the aircraft you understand why these guys wanted to get the aircraft down on the ground as quickly as possible. Because they now had this huge sail-like door hanging fully open and they would have flown in speeds of about 200 to 250 knots, you know? And the restrictions of 45 knots for actually having that door open on the ground. So this is way outside of what this door is designed to do. On top of that, 
the aircraft is now being flown. You know, you have aerodynamic forces that's going to be moving the aircraft, but maybe 30% of one part of the aircraft body is not there. So the structural integrity of the aircraft is in doubt. And if this door would be ripped off its hinges because of the aerodynamic load, well then it could rip more of the aircraft structure with it. Think about Aloha Airline Flight 243, for example. Also, as it separates from the aircraft, it could potentially fly back and damage more parts of the aircraft, you know, maybe even the, um, the vertical stabilizer, the fin and the rudder with that, and of course fall down and cause injuries on the ground. Now there were some parts of the, the door that actually did fall down. It fell down onto a coal power plant about 10 miles west of the, uh, of the airport, but there were no injuries to any people on the ground. Instead, this aircraft did what looks like a completely normal approach and landing. Uh, it rolled into position and held on runway 08 right, possibly to assess the damage, to see if there's any leakage, for example. You don't, if it's actually still leaking hydraulic fluid, you don't want to be pulling it around on the airport, potentially spreading this hydraulic fluid out. But also, like I was saying, you know, this aircraft is not allowed to be towed with the door open, even though I think that they ultimately had to do this anyway. So what will happen to this aircraft now then? Well, I've been talking to a friend of mine who works with the 757 and who has some insight into the engineering world as well. And he says that it all depends on what kind of damage that was caused by this. The fact that they were flying with the door open, it makes it very possible that there are some torsion twists in the body. And if that's the case, it's a very high possibility that this is a complete write-off of this aircraft. Even though it looks perfectly fine, if the structural integrity is in doubt, it might become too expensive to actually fix it for it to be worth it, right? So it could be a write-off of this aircraft, but we won't know until the engineers have done a complete check of the aircraft structure. So what I take from this is that I am impressed by how the pilots dealt with this. This would have been a very dramatic event. There would have been a lot of noise. The aircraft would probably have been shaking and felt very differently. And also, they know that they're working against the clock here. They need to get this aircraft down on the ground before any further damage appears to it. So to turn it around and land on the opposite runway um, is, you know, exactly what I would expect them to do. Also, you know, the weather was not great. It was a bit foggy, but with that came very, very low winds, which worked in their favor because if the winds would have been stronger, they probably would have had to fly further to land on the same runway as they took off from. So from what I can see, from what we know so far, great job by the crew. We don't know why the uh, um, locks, the mechanical locks failed, or if they failed, or if there was something hydraulic involved in this. We're gonna have to wait for the final report to know that, and I'm not here to speculate. The only reason I do these videos, guys, is to give you a little bit of insight from a pilot point of view of what we would have to think about in a situation like this. And if you like these kind of videos, then I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. Also, these kind of things, Whenever something happens in the aviation world, we have a top team of writers in mentorpilot.com that writes articles about it. So make sure that you have kind of highlighted mentorpilot.com, that is one of your bookmarks. Go in and check it daily to see if something's happening. And also get the free Mentor Aviation app, because in the Mentor Aviation app, my team is picking stories from other publications, not only mentorpilot.com, but from everywhere, and gives it for you for free so that you can keep on top of what, everything that's going on in the aviation world at all times. So get the app, go to mentorpilot.com, have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.